Hey there my lovelies and welcome to my booktube channel the Sassy Library Fox. My name is V and today we're going to talk about my two year anniversary on booktube. I can't believe that it's been already two years and that I've been making, creating and editing videos for two years. It's, whoa, it's, it feels like such a long time, <laughs> but also like it's actually short. So yeah, because of this, I decided to go for another question and answers video. And I think the last Q&A video I did was months ago, probably a year ago. I don't know. I decided to give you a chance to throw some questions my way and to celebrate accordingly. <laughs> And I think your questions will be way more interesting than any tag I could do, especially the anniversary tag. I already did that one last year, so I figured you might want to throw some questions my way. And I mean, the channel grew a lot <laughs> since the last time I did one of those. So I gave you a chance to write me some questions and in the end it turned out to be quite a lot. <laughs> I hope I will be able to answer them all in one video and that I won't have to go for a part two, but I guess we will see. So thank you guys so much for throwing some questions my way and before I start I'm just gonna do this here. <laughs> oh, wrong direction. Or is it going to work now? <laughs> so yeah, I have something to celebrate and unfortunately that always kind of hangs out and isn't that funny anymore <laughs> once you did it. So yeah, I tried to make it a little bit cheery and yes, I'm sorry I'm wearing a vest but it's freezing outside, we have minus degrees <laughs> and yeah, I'm cold so I decided to wear <laughs> my vest. Anyway, let's just do this and jump into all the interesting questions I got from you. At first I thought I wouldn't get any but then you guys went for it <laughs> and now I have a little bit too many questions but anyway I will try to get through them all in just one video. <laughs> Watch me try and fail is all I'm going to say. Anyway, the first question I got was from Becky at Teacup the Storyteller and she asked the favorite video you made. Oof, the favorite video I made, that's, that's quite a tough one. Um, I made so many favorite videos which I loved. I don't know if you love them too, but I personally love them. But I think um, last year it definitely were my vlogs because I've never done a vlog before and it was fun to do it, to go outside and to discover the free little libraries and to film outside in the open with people watching. <laughs> it was kind of weird, but it was also fun. Um, so yeah, my first vlog, or vlog as I like to call it, was a lot of fun to film um, and very chaotic, but I enjoyed that. I kind of loved that my chaotic energy was so present in that one. And another video I loved to film was the ARC video, when I got the Dante and Ari arc in a box and unboxed it. So yeah, that's that's definitely one of my favorites too. Okay, next question came from Sabrina, the Yongi to my V, <laughs> and she asked, do you have a favorite part of the booktube process, e.g. filming or editing? I actually like to do all of those things. It's a lot of fun to record the videos, to come up with the ideas, to execute them and to bend them on the record. But 
I also discovered that I have a lot of fun with editing. I mean, my editing skills aren't the best. Um, I'm pretty certain there are people out there, and especially booktubers, who edit way, way better than me. I mean, I just think of Becky, a teacup the storyteller. Her editing skills are amazing. I love to watch her videos. <laughs> um, but I'm trying my best. I think I've come a long way with editing because when I started to edit, I wasn't even able to put pictures into the frame <laughs> and to show you the books I read. So that improved a lot and I'm getting better at it. I don't have as much time as I want to dig deeper and to get more into editing, but it will have to suffice for now. <laughs> And yeah, I think the answer is I enjoy editing way more than I thought I would, if that makes sense. Anyway, next question. Oh, I turn it around. <laughs> you can see the chaotic energy in this video is strong once again. I even brought my coffee, you know, <laughs> no video that is relaxed and easy. It's going to happen without my coffee. So yes, my coffee is at hand. I just put it aside. And let's just go for the next question, which came from Tatiana at Reading with Tatiana. And she actually asked me a couple of questions, <laughs> which I'm going to try to answer here. First one was your favorite booktube tag and least favorite booktube tag. Um, my favorite booktube tag, that's a hard one, that's really a hard one. I think um, I really enjoyed doing the BTS ones. <laughs> um, I think it was the BTS B booktube tag and the August D2 book tag. Those two I really enjoyed doing and also last year my booktube anniversary tag because it made me reflect on the things I learned in the first year on Booktube and it was kind of nice. Um, and as for the least favorite Booktube tag, I think it's actually the one I posted last and got up online here about a couple of days ago. It's the Truth or Dare Booktube tag. Not because I didn't enjoy that one. It was really fun to do, but it was also extremely challenging and I was so worried I would have tails and would have to do something to my books I didn't want to do. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it, it was a small um, line to walk. So, yeah, I, I think I don't want to do that one again. Once was enough. And the second question Tatiana asked me was which video were you most surprised by the response? And I think it was my ARC unboxing video. Um, it got more than 400 views and I think 26 likes or so. And that's a lot for my channel. My views are usually between 30 or 80 views per video, so 400 was quite a lot. Um, I was really surprised that this unboxing video um, took off like that. And what always surprises me and continues to surprise me is the fact that my to be read videos get the most likes and views but not all of them, just every once in a while one of them will apparently stick out and a lot of people will watch it. And I still haven't figured out why that is the way it is, but apparently you guys like my to be read videos. I have no other explanation for that. It's funny that from all the videos I'm posting and uploading on here, the to be read videos seem to be the best viewed and most liked. It's interesting. So, okay, <laughs> next question or questions will be from Cello. Hey there, Cello. It's so nice to see comments of you on my channel every once in a while so that I still know you're around. 
And Cello has been around from the very beginning, so thank you so, so much, Cello. The support means everything. Same goes for the Yongi to my V. Sabrina has been with me from the very first moment I started this channel and I'm so grateful for those two. And also that they still participate and ask me questions. Even though they know me pretty well, but apparently they don't know all about me yet. And well, Cello's first question is, is there a book that made you ugly cry? And at first I thought, I don't know, a lot of books make me ugly cry. There are so, so many books that had me crying at the ending and I just, I was, tears were streaming down my face and I was so out of it. But I think the two books that qualify the most for really making me ugly cry, like I just couldn't get myself under control anymore, was the second book of the All for the Game series, um, The Raven King. I cried buckets of tears after The Raven King. My hubby even asked me if I was okay <laughs> because I was crying so much. And the other book I have to mention here, which brings tears to my eyes just thinking about it, is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Or Patrick? I don't know how you would pronounce him, if it would be more English or German, but the book, A Monster Cause. Oh, I read that book at night, I finished it at night, and I think it was a couple of minutes after midnight when I finished that book, and I was just, I, I was such a crying mess, you have no idea. This book hits so, so hard, it's about a boy named Connor and his mother is ill and he visits her at hospital and he's all alone and feels all alone and his father and his grandmother are trying to take care of him but he misses his mom and one night a monster comes or appears in his dreams and confronts him with the reality and the truth. And this book hits so hard on so many different levels that it's really hard to, to put into words how hard this book hit me. I think it even hit me harder because back then when I read it, I was already a parent. And if you read this book as a parent, you feel your heart bleeds. It's ripped out of your ribcage and you just bleed. Connor and for all the people in this book. It's really, if you haven't read A Monster Calls yet, please read this book. It has such a great representation of grief and of the power of things unsaid and unspoken. And oh, this book, Ugly Crying. I think I've ugly cried for an hour straight after finishing this one. So yes, this book really, whoa. It's, yeah, definitely made me ugly cry. Okay, and the second question, hopefully a little bit lighter one, is which character would you love to dance with? Uh, <laughs> so, I recently said when I got the question in a tag that there aren't a lot of dancing scenes in books. But, now comes the huge but, there was a really great dancing scene in A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. And the person I would love to dance with is Nesta. Nesta Archeron. <laughs> because this woman knows how to dance she knows how much joy it brings, how much fun it can be, how you can lose yourself in the movements and in the moment. And to dance with her would be such joy and so much fun because she knows what she's doing. She is an amazing dancer and 
I don't know if you know this about me. Probably the people that are new to this channel don't know it. I danced a very long time with a dancing crew and we even took part in competitions. So dancing is a huge part of my life still. I can't dance as much as I want to anymore because of various old injuries and problems with my health. But it's still a part of me and I still love to dance. Not as excessively as back then when I was a teen and a young adult, but I still do it. So the joy I felt while reading that scene where Nestor is dancing in the book, ah, I could relate so much and I think to dance with Nesta would be amazing. So yeah, unconventional answer, but I stand by it. <laughs> Um, next question, also by Cello, is what book did you hate to love? And oof, that's a hard one. Which book did I hate to love? I think I think I will go with Sadie by Kurtner Summers here. I absolutely loved this book. It was so good. It was written so so well. But I also kind of hate it <laughs> for being written so well, for making me feel all those feelings, for still keeping me up and awake at some nights because I'm still not over the ending and my mind keeps drifting back to this book every once in a while and wonders how it actually all ended. So I really like this book. But I also kind of hate it <laughs> for what it's doing with me. Um, yeah, I have a very, very complicated relationship with Sadie. Or rather, not with Sadie herself, but with the book. <laughs> As you can see. So, yes, that's my answer right there. That's, that's my answer. Okay, question number four from Cello is Any morally great characters that fascinate you? And morally great characters are my kryptonite. I love morally great characters in books. I'm always so intrigued by them. And I don't know. I know a lot of people don't like morally great characters for various reasons, but I'm a sucker for them. <laughs> and Two morally great characters that fascinate me and that I can't help but love are definitely Victor Vale from the villain series by V.E. Schwab. Victor Vale doesn't just have the double V, <laughs> which is really such a great name, by the way, but Victor is also one of those characters that has some values and bestows them or teaches them to his adopted kid um, but he also is not the nicest person and he also has no trouble to kill someone in cold blood he is i don't know he doesn't have any scruples to use his powers for himself and for the people he loves um, I think there are moments where he draws the line and situations where he clearly has a moral compass, <laughs> but at other times it just eludes him. <laughs> so that is a really, really fascinating character for me. Victor Will will never stop being fascinating for me. And the second character, which you probably don't expect, is actually Lord Henry from The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And the reason why I love Lord Henry and why he is such an intriguing villain for me is the fact that he isn't exactly aware of what he is doing to Dorian. Um, he has such a huge influence on him. And I think to some degree or to a really really certain degree, he knows that he's corrupting Dorian. 
and he enjoys corrupting that innocent boy and to question him and to push him in certain directions and to certain actions and to make him think about certain things. But also, I think he isn't aware of the huge influence he has on him. He, he knows that he has an influence on him and he likes to push his story's boundaries. But in the end, he's also kind of clueless of what he's doing to him and how much he's actually corrupting him. So, yeah, Lord Henry is a very multi-layered and well-read and interesting gentleman. And I love him as some sort of villain, but also as a very morally great character. Okay, before I go to the next question, I will just drink a little bit of my coffee. <laughs> I'm talking a lot here, so I just need to drink every once in a while. Um, question number five, also from Cello, is which book left you with the best cliffhanger? The best cliffhanger. Okay, I think, I still think, that the book with the best cliffhanger ever that made me almost tear up my hair <laughs> and had me thrown for a loop for a very long time to be honest until the last book was released was Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas it was already the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series and Quite honestly, that ending was brutal. It was so, so brutal. When I read that book at the ending, I just wanted to pick up the next one. And the trouble was I couldn't. Because one, the seventh book only got out after the sixth book was released. And two, the sixth book, which I already mentioned, was a story in between. So, Sarah J. Maas did a really horrible thing to all her readers. She didn't just end her fifth book in the series on the worst and most horrible, horrible cliffhangers of all cliffhangers. No! She also just decided to put in a sixth book in the series that had nothing, literally nothing, to do with the ending of book five and had an entirely different cast of characters, an entirely different kind of plot, and then you had to read book six to know what happened during the same time line that was in book five, and only could read and continue to read with book seven. So, yes. Sarah J. Maas did us readers so dirty with that one. <laughs> it was the worst cliffhanger ever. And considering that you even had to wait for book 6 to come out and then for book 7 to come out and that cliffhanger was looming over our heads for about two years, I think. It was horrible. It was horrible. So not nice, Sarah J. Maas. So not nice. <laughs> so yes. Definitely one of the worst cliffhangers ever in all of the history of cliffhangers. <laughs> and next question, question number six by Cello and the last one is what have you enjoyed most about your booktube experience? <sighs> what have I enjoyed about my booktube experience the most? Well, I think just being on here, connecting with other readers, talking with them, exchanging thoughts, finding book inspirations by other booktubers that raved or ranted about certain books, and to interact with all those other booktubers, to, to watch the videos, to comment on them, to receive a comment on my own videos. I think the interactions are so important for me because I think I already mentioned that once. I don't have a lot of people I can talk books with in real life. My two besties read a lot, but um, one of them barely gets a chance to read because she's so busy with her family 
and the other one mostly reads in the genre of thrillers and horror books. So not exactly the books I read. I'm more in the LGBTQIA plus genre and fantasy and young adult. I read a lot of young adult. So yeah, being on here, connecting with other people, having contact being able to rave or rant about books and being understood by other readers is definitely one of my favorite things on booktube. Okay, so that were a lot of questions, Cello, but they also were very interesting, so thank you so much for throwing them my way. It was a lot of fun to answer them. <laughs> um, and yeah, sorry for being passionate about some of them, but I am a reader. I'm passionate about the books I read. <laughs>